In a recent video, we built this marquee right here using the code you see on the left. And I showed you a few options that you have to customize the marquee. But the problem was it wasn't enough options. And you guys had a lot of questions in the comments about other stuff you could possibly do with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you more stuff you can do with that marquee using just the HTML tag for marquee. This can be done on any website that's built with HTML. I'm using Elementor here. I have the pro version installed on the site, but you do this in the pre version as long as you can edit HTML. If you have the HTML widget, you can add this in. You can do that outside of Elementor. You can just use a WordPress page and just, and just use the HTML widget built into the Gutenberg block editor. Either way, you can do this pretty much anywhere where you can add HTML. The first thing we're going to do is add a background color. Since we're in Elementor, this is super easy. We can't add it directly to the HTML code without a bunch of coding, but we can add it to the column. So if we click on the column, go to style, let's add a background gradient. Let's make one color really light blue, other one a darker blue. Let's change the angle. And there you have a nice little background color. Super easy to do with Elementor. To change the text color is a little different. We don't have Elementor options for that because we're using HTML code for the marquee, but you can come in here and type in style equals open and close quotations, and then type in color colon, and then you can add a hex code or you can add a word. So if I type in the word white, followed by a semicolon. The semicolon is optional if you only have one CSS command, but we have now white text. You can make this green. There's over 80 different colors recognized by using just words. And there's millions, I don't know if it's millions, but there's a lot by using hex code numbers. I don't even know if this is a real one, but anyway, there's white for hex code or black. If it's all repeating like this, you can just use three. It's weird with the hex code. Hex code is technically six characters. Anyway, that's how we can change the color. I have a different tutorial on a different channel where I go into more detail on the color rules for CSS. I've linked to that in the description down below and the carp above if you want to check that out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to that channel as well because it's awesome stuff over there. And that channel focuses on CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. And this one that you're on right now focuses on WordPress and things you can do with WordPress. The other stuff applies as well. You can do HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in WordPress as well, but you can also do it independently of WordPress. So that's how we add a color. I'm going to paste in a bunch of code now, and we're going to go through it bit by bit. Let's first address the speed. Let's make this a, a gray color for the text. So the speed, we have the scroll amount, and then equals open and close brackets and a number in between. So if we make this number two, we see it goes super slow. And number 20 goes really fast. 200 is kind of useless. It's way too fast. One might be useless too, but depending on the type of site you're building, maybe one is just perfect. Either way, I would choose a number between one and 20. You go beyond 20, it's getting pretty darn fast. 10 is pretty quick, but that's like a news ticker speed, 10. Five you could use for a slower news ticker. Anyway, number between one and 20 is probably best. We have on mouse over equals this dot stop open and close bracket semicolon inside the quotes. Then we have on mouse out this dot start open and close brackets. And what this is saying is when we mouse over the ticker, we want to stop it. When we mouse off of the ticker, we want to start it. Here's how it works. As I hover over it, it stops. Hover off of it, it starts again. And this is jQuery, which is a JavaScript library. Elementor has it built in if you want Elementor to load it on your site. WordPress has it built in as well. I don't recommend you load it twice, but uh, if WordPress is loading it, Elementor won't load it. Either way, it's probably active on your site if you're using WordPress and or Elementor. And all you have to do is add these two parameters to your marquee tag and it'll do this. And I'm gonna copy and paste this whole thing into a comment below this video. I can't put it in the description because YouTube doesn't like the pointy bracket characters, the less than, more than characters. And so it'll be in the first comment, the pinned comment down below. Hopefully YouTube will allow that, usually it does. And we also have behavior equals alternate. You'll remember, well maybe you will, maybe you won't. 
In the first video, I'm going to bump this up to 20 so it goes faster. In the first video, we had scroll behavior, where it just scrolls all the way and just keeps scrolling until it's totally off the screen, then it comes back. There's also slide behavior, and it just slides in and it stays there. Not super useful if you've got a whole bunch of news, although I did show you how to add line breaks between every news item, and so you could have a list of news items here that stop. And alternate is the other option, and it bounces back and forth. It gets to the end, and it bounces back. And it gets to the beginning, and it bounces back. And so it bounces back and forth like this with the alternate behavior. Scroll is probably the most popular. Then we also have H space, which is horizontal space and vertical space. If I bump this up to 20%, you'll see what it means. It's bigger. You can make this pixels as well. 20 is not much of a difference, but 200 is a big difference. So you can define the space that the marquee takes. Put this back to 2% or zero. You don't have to have any of these parameters inside the tag if you don't want to. If you don't want H space, just delete it. To show you what H space does, let's add 20% we see the width is now beyond the edge and it's not all the way to the end. Might not be what you're looking for. You can change the height, make this 300. This is the height of the new sticker. You'll notice when I hover down here, it's stopping the ticker. Whereas when we're back here, you have to hover pretty much right over the text for that to work. So you can change the, the hover area with that option. You can make this too small too. If I make this 10, let's make it 15. You only see the tops of the words and that's not cool. So make sure you choose a height that is appropriate for your ticker and your font size. And then there's the width, which is the width of the marquee. If I make this 500, you'll see it goes overboard, way over here. And if you don't have these two, it'll just fit itself to the widget you put it into. In this case, the HTML widget in Elementor. And if you're not using Elementor, it'll fit itself to the container that you put the marquee into. We have scroll delay right here. This also has to do with the speed of the scroll. So if I change this to say 1000, we see the scroll is very smooth and also very slow. The scroll amount also relates to the speed. Bump it up to 200 and it goes faster again bump up the scroll delay to 2000 and it goes slow again. So just use one of those two, I'd recommend. You don't need to use both. Although if you find a perfect setting where you use both, that's fine. Let's put these back to what they were. And those are all of the options I wanted to show you inside of the marquee. These are all the different parameters you can use. Like I said, it's gonna be down below in the first pinned comment. So you can just copy and paste it and you can change them how you want them, take out ones you want, Add stuff you want if there's more to add. I guess there's stuff to add here for the actual stories. Adding dynamic stories in here is very difficult because you'd have to have some PHP. If you have a plugin that allows you to do PHP inside of this little widget here, then you could be, then you can pull WordPress posts because you're inside the loop on the page. So you can pull in WordPress posts using code you find on Stack Overflow and Google. So it can be done but you have to add a plugin that allows you to do PHP. If you guys really want to see that, I can show you how to do it. Just leave a comment down below and let me know you want to see that. Next up, check out this playlist right here, which is all about WordPress skills and improving WordPress skills. If you want to learn more about how Elementor works and how to be awesome at it, check out that playlist. Check out both if you can. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it. I will see you in the next video.